Hi everyone. Today we're in for a really special treat. Bobby Taylor from the YouTube channel Gardening on Taylor Mountain is going to give us an exclusive look inside her dried flower cottage. This is an eight by eight foot prefab garden shed that she transformed into the garden room of her dreams. So let's head over to Virginia and get some inspiration and valuable tips on garden structures from Bobby over at Gardening on Taylor Mountain. Hey everyone at Northland Flower Farm. I'm thrilled to be with you today. My name is Bobby and Danielle has so kindly invited me to be a guest on her channel once again. She and I were chatting recently about her new garden cottage and I was telling her how happy and excited I am for her about her new structure in her garden area. And she knew I had a structure that was very similar to hers. In fact, both of our structures are the exact same size, eight feet by eight feet. But mine is a little different. Hers is custom built and mine is a prefab building. Now, I did make a few changes when we ordered our building and I ordered it from the same company that we had ordered our green greenhouse from and it's the exact same color the exact same paint and everything like that I'll insert a couple pictures here of my greenhouse my greenhouse is also eight feet by eight feet so if I step to the side here you can see that mine basically looks like a utility shed or some sort of a shed something like that there is one window and I have a solar light there and then I have the wider door the roof pitch is higher in the front and it slants down in the back and it's called their condo model and there's one window on the other side so when we go in you'll see what I use this structure for I'll walk around and give you the side view and you can see there the slant of the roof and here's the back view and you can see there it's the same color as our garage and then you saw in the pictures the same color as my greenhouse I'll go ahead and open the door just so you can see how it opens but once we get in I'll change my camera around so you can see a little better I'll take you off the tripod in a minute so you can get a more close-up look of everything in here. But as you can tell, it is a dried flower shed. Now, because of Danielle, I have changed the name to a dried flower cottage. Dried flower cottage sounds so much better than dried flower shed. So I'm so happy that her builder started calling hers a garden cottage because now I was like, oh, duh, why haven't I been calling this a dried flower cottage? I wanted to show you with me standing inside that you see that there's quite a bit of room in here with it only being eight feet by eight feet. And it is packed to the max, it's packed full. I have some really fun things in here. So let's take you off the tripod and show you around just a little bit more. One of the first things that you probably notice when you look in this cottage is that we chose not to finish out the inside with paneling or drywall or anything like that. I knew that I wanted to put the pegboard on the wall so that I could hang my dried flowers. And also we have some trellises that we have hung on the ceiling. You can see there the ceiling is slanted so that I can hang dried flowers. The other thing I was really excited to be able to put in this cottage are these apple boxes as shelving. These were used here on the farm. There was a working orchard for many, many years and they were used in the orchard. So I was so glad to be able to use them. They make perfect shelves and you can see that they are extremely full with all of my vases and things like that. When we swing around this way, you can see the dried flowers that I've dried over the last couple of years. And there's more pegboard. So I've tried to utilize all the space I possibly can. These cute vintage seed packets here, uh, one of my friends on Instagram had them and I just had to have some. I ordered those from Etsy. And then these really cute monarch butterfly valances my oldest granddaughter made me. Uh, they work perfect here for the windows. I'll show you real quickly how I transformed this space into a place that I can come out 
and make an arrangement if I want to, or make a video if I want to, bring my laptop, do some reading. Now there's no heat and air in here, so I have to take that into account. I do have little greenhouse heaters that I can bring in here with no problem and uh, just warm it up and make it nice and toasty if I wanna use it during the winter. When the sun is out, even on winter days, it's really nice and warm in here. So I've just really used this space quite a bit. And voila, it turns into a little workspace. I bought this little desk and an antique store. I bought this chair. It's a folding antique chair. And the chair just goes right on my pegboard. This desk goes in another shed and just gets covered and stored until I want to use it in here. So like I said, I can just bring my laptop in here. I can bring a book in here. I can work on a dried flower arrangement. I can work on a fresh flower arrangement in here. Basically just whatever I want to do. Danielle asked me what I would do differently. We bought this cottage in 2022 and actually my husband bought it for me for our anniversary. And so it'll be two years that I've had it. And so when she said, you know, think about what you might have done differently. And I thought about that and I thought, Hmm. I don't think I would have done anything differently. And here's why. When I come into this space, I say to myself, and a lot of times I say it out loud, I love this cottage. I really look at it as a bonus space because I was hanging all of my dried flowers in my office. Now my office is about 10 by 15 and I have big closet in there and I have all of my desk, my office equipment and everything. And then I have all of my seed starting racks in my office. So I was hanging all of my dried flowers, all of the flowers I wanted to dry on the seed starting racks. So you can imagine that it got quite crowded in there and I was limited. I really wasn't drying as many flowers as I am now. So whenever I think about this space, I just say it's a bonus space. It's a space I did not have before. And now I think where in the world did I keep all of these vases for my giveaway bouquets and things like that? Where did I keep them? I think I just must have kept them in a closet or in the shed in the other enclosed shed or something like that, I don't know. And of course I've acquired a few more since I've had this cottage, but I basically had quite a few before. Now I will admit, and I'll try to insert some footage in here, during the peak growing season, this cottage gets like so crowded. I have zero head space when I walk in because here because the entire ceiling is full of flowers that are in the drying process. Once they get fully dried, then I move them to the back wall and I kind of layer them so that I can have them there to use them for projects. But when I come in here during the peak growing season and everything is hanging down and I have to bend down and really try to see my vases and try to see what I want to use and things like that, I start to get a little bit like hmm, I wish I'd have built it a little bigger or I wish I'd have built the ceilings a little higher and a little more height to the ceilings. But then I really grab those thoughts, but I say, no, wait, this is a bonus space and it's not always going to be that I have to duck my head when I come in here and that the flowers are going to be dried and they're gonna be put on the back wall, then I'll have space to put my little desk and I'll be able to come in here and do my little projects and things that I wanna do. So I really kind of grab those thoughts and rein them because in. Because I think we can become dissatisfied with anything. And I just keep reminding myself, no, 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 this is a bonus space and I'm really blessed to have it. So no, I really wouldn't have done anything differently with either this or my greenhouse. I'm just really happy with both of those spaces. I think when you're thinking about a structure for your garden space, you need to take into account several things. The first thing, of course, I think about is budget. After 2020, things just went through the roof as far as the price of lumber and everything like that. So this shed costs twice as much as it would have had we bought it before 2020. So budget was the first thing that I thought about. And next we thought about what would look right for our property here. We have a working farm and I knew I wanted it to match and be the same color as the rest of our structures. They're all the same color. Our house is the same color. So we really took all of that into consideration. And even though the company calls this a condo, there are no condos around here where I live. I think it fits in really well with the rest of our structures. I'm going to turn it back over to Danielle now. And as I said, it's been my pleasure to be with you today. Well, Bobby, thank you so much for sharing that amazing tour with us. 
Friends, do you agree when Bobby opened the door to that shed, it really took my breath away to see all those dried flowers everywhere. And I just can so relate to another gardener who wants a dried flower sanctuary right in their backyard. I really love how Bobby made this shed her own and really basically created it to serve the purpose that she needed, a place, like she said, to work, read, design flowers, and dry flowers. And I've really been thinking a lot about how I want the interior of our garden cottage to look. And my goal is to still have it look like a garden library. Probably the best way to describe it is that I want it to look like a really small English study. I want you to open those doors and for you to feel like, not like it's a she shed, not a potting shed or a garden shed, but that you're almost inside someone's home over in England in their small study. That's kind of what I'm going for. So I'm thinking about doing a wall-to-wall -wall bookcase where we have tons of books about gardening with two comfortable chairs right in front and then a small table in the middle. And maybe we even have some ledges on the windows where we can put amaryllis. But in terms of having anything else in the cottage, I'm thinking it's really just all about the back wall and then keeping everything else really nice and open so that it doesn't feel too claustrophobic in there. But certainly that could change <laughs> as the days and weeks and months go on. But for now, I wanna wish you a wonderful day. Please go ahead over to Bobby's channel, Gardening on Taylor Mountain, and subscribe to her channel. Watch lots of her awesome gardening content. She does wonderful DIYs. She takes you on really cool gardening adventures. She does cup flowers. She does cool flowers. But mainly, I think you'll love her just for the person that she is because she's an absolutely beautiful person inside and out. And I think we need more people like that here on YouTube, and even better if they're gardeners. Well, friends, I wanna wish you a wonderful day and happy gardening. Bye.